And while all of those are good and valid suggestions, it's almost like some people just don't want to believe. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Friday, August 4th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, I've got something really, really interesting to share with you. We're gonna use some of these beautiful plants in this plot here beside me to try and explain why some tomatoes just don't like it here. So this is one of the three established no-till garden plots that we have. Now we don't have a whole lot growing in here at the moment, but what we do have growing in here is looking absolutely phenomenal. So on this side of the plot, we have two rows of Orlean sweet potatoes, although it kind of looks like one contiguous jungle at this point. We are getting a little bit of pest pressure on some of those leaves, but besides that, these look great. These may be the best looking sweet potato plants I have ever had. And then over here, we have two little stretches of midsummer cucumbers. We've got some pickles right here. Now, for some reason, only two of the seeds I planted in this little stretch germinated. So I'm not sure if this is the Excelsior variety or the Supremo variety, but either way, it looks like these plants are gonna end up covering this entire trellis. And then these are Corinto slicing cucumbers. We are getting a little bit of pest pressure, but we really couldn't ask for any better looking plants, especially this time of year with as hot as it has been lately. And if we take a closer look here, I think we've already got some fruits forming on these plants. So that's what we've got going on in here now, but it wasn't that long ago when we had four rows of tomatoes in this plot. So earlier this year, we had two rows of hybrid disease resistant determinant tomatoes right here. And then right over here, we had two rows of indeterminate heirloom tomatoes. Now, when we were growing and harvesting those tomatoes, we often showed the stark contrast between the hybrid determinants and the heirloom indeterminates. We got boatloads of tomatoes from the hybrid determinants. We got a lot of dead plants and a lot of pitiful harvests from the heirloom indeterminates. So there was a huge difference in performance there, but on top of that, we fed those heirloom indeterminates much, much more than we fed those determinate plants. Had a lot to do with the fact that the heirlooms always looked like they were struggling and looked like they needed something, whereas the determinates just looked like they were good to go. Now, before I go any further, let me just say that we appreciate any and all comments that we get on our videos. I learn a good bit from reading all those comments, so by no means am I ever trying to discourage feedback. But every year when we're growing tomatoes and we're showing that stark contrast between the hybrid determinants and the heirloom indeterminates, we always get a bunch of comments that go something like this. Well, your heirlooms aren't performing well because you don't have healthy soil there. You need to have good soil biology. That'll make those plants grow better. Or some will say, well, the reason they're not performing well is because you got all this bare soil here. You need to mulch your garden and that will change the way those plants look. And while all of those are good and valid suggestions, it's almost like some people just don't want to believe that some tomato varieties don't grow well down here. They think it's something that we're not doing as opposed to just certain tomato varieties not liking our climate. Now, I know we're comparing apples to oranges here or cucumbers to tomatoes, but if anything, these cucumber plants tell us that there is nothing wrong with this soil here. We've only given these some pre-plant fertilizer. When we put those seeds in the ground, they haven't been fed anything else. They haven't been sprayed with any fungicides or anything like that, and they're just absolutely thriving. And cucumber plants are not supposed to look this good this time of year down here. I know because we used to try to grow cucumbers all throughout the warm season when we sold our vegetables. And usually this time of year, they've got mildew all over them. They may be producing a little bit, but the plants usually look pretty rough when we're staying in the mid 90s like we've been lately. Now those great looking sweet potato plants over there don't really help us prove our point because sweet potatoes thrive in this kind of weather. They like it hot, but I think the cucumbers do help prove our point, which is there's nothing wrong with this soil here. There's nothing wrong with not having mulch in this soil. If we can grow cucumbers and have them look like that in the middle of summer, 
I think our soil's in pretty good shape. The problem is there are just some tomato varieties that don't like it down here. Now we did save seeds from two of those heirloom indeterminate plants that looked pretty decent and persisted to the end of our tomato growing season down here in South Georgia. So the goal would be to see if they acclimate over the years to our climate down here, but that's not as easy as you think. And let me tell you why. So this has always been one of my big issues with seed saving. And we'll try to talk about this without going too far down the genetic rabbit hole but there's no guarantee that the traits you are selecting for when deciding which fruits you're going to save seed from there's no guarantee that those traits are going to be passed to the next generation now i don't have any tomatoes to show but we can use these cucumbers as a good example so here we have a nice straight cucumber which is what most people want and right beside this cucumber on the same plant we harvested this crooked cucumber now, assuming this was an open pollinated cucumber variety, if I saved seeds from this cucumber and replanted it, there would be no guarantee that I would get all straight cucumbers. Just like if I planted seeds from this crooked cucumber, I'd probably get a decent amount of straight cucumbers. Now, if we were to take some tissue samples from these cucumbers and do a really complex genetic analysis and nail down what in the genetic code makes this cucumber straight versus this cucumber crooked, then maybe we could select certain traits and selectively breed cucumbers to be straight as opposed to crooked. But it could be that this is not a trait thing at all, just could be some random environmental reason why this one is crooked and this one is straight. So you can go out to your garden and pick a nice big ripe tomato, save some seeds from it, grow those out and hope that the offspring are gonna share some of those same characteristics that you saw in that really nice parent tomato. But there's no guarantee that it will because you don't know if the desirable traits in that parent tomato you harvested are tied to the genetic code or they could be mostly environmental if they are tied to the genetic code you don't know how those traits are expressed and passed on to the next generation now i'm not poo-pooing on seed saving i think seed saving is great because it helps preserve the legacy of some of these great older varieties take for example that seminole pumpkin we have growing back there but i think a lot of gardeners that are saving seeds from nice looking fruits think they're doing a lot more than they're actually doing without knowing what traits you're trying to preserve there and how those traits are passed you're really just kind of picking and guessing and in addition to that any kind of local acclimation or adaptation is going to take many many generations or many many years if anybody tells you that they've achieved that in just a couple generations I don't know that I would believe them. Now, we may be able to eventually achieve some kind of local acclimation with that Turkey Creek tomato variety, but it's probably going to take at least six generations, if not more. And lastly, circling back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the video, don't be too hard on yourself if a variety doesn't perform well in your garden. Yes, you can make sure you're doing all the right things, but some varieties just don't like certain places. So don't think it's your fault. Could just be that variety doesn't like your area and you need to pick something a little more vigorous. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to check out our affiliate links and coupon codes in the description below. And also go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. And if you missed seeing those pitiful looking indeterminate tomato plants, check out this video right here. We'll show you just how pitiful they looked. And you can compare that to how these cucumbers look now and kind of see what we're talking about. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.